How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this really cool disintegration effect. Now this whole process was inspired by this artist right here on Twitter. He made this really cool, what he called the Loki effect test. And I saw it and I thought it was really cool. So I figured I'd try my hand at recreating it with a spin on it. So I ended up taking this very fiery looking kind of effect. It's not even meant to be look like fire, just some really cool disintegrations. Now, before I get into that, I quickly want to say today's video is brought to you by the real time materials. It is a collection of 200 fully editable and procedural materials made for EV and cycles. There's a wide variety of materials going from marble to ceramics to plaster and tons of beautiful abstract materials. If you would like to know more, hit the link in the description below. Hello. All right, we're back. Now, this is a pretty simple process. If we go over here to the shading, this is a pretty small node tree. Even CG Matter made a pretty similar effect here a while back. He was burning paper. He had a pretty elaborate node setup. In this case, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. If you love really elaborate setups, check that out from CG Matter. So let's dive straight into how to make this. So this is a procedural process, meaning anything you want to do. So if you want to disintegrate the default cube, feel free to do that. Any base mesh works. I want to use the monkey because it really has a lot of fun having the disintegration on all these different curves and surfaces. I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface to this monkey shade smooth and we'll hop straight into shading because that's where everything is happening here. I'm going to hit my drop down here and bring down the world opacity. I just like it to be gray. Now we're going to go ahead and start with a new shader here. We're going to click new. I'm going to bring it over. I'm going to make it metallic. In this case, as we're designing, remember this principle can take the place of anything. You can use an image texture, make it wood, make it anything. You can make some pretty elaborate procedural setups to make stucco, whatever. Um, so this next portion is what we're going to do for the disintegration. So let's get in a mix shader, plug it there, shift a search, and we'll get a transparent. So we'll get a transparent BSDF and we'll plug it right here on this bottom socket. Now we need to activate this transparency first. So what we're going to do is go over here to the shader, make sure that in the uh, click on this little camera icon, you are in the EV render engine, click on this little camera here, and then on blend mode, go here to alpha blend and click on back face curling. That's really, really important. So now you can kind of see some transparency going on. That's because these two shaders are mixing uh, perfectly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is make a mask. And this is where the magic is going to start happening. So we're going to go ahead, shift a search, get in a color ramp. We want to be able to manipulate some stuff that's going on here. And then let's go ahead and get in a gradient G or a gradient texture with the node Wrangler add on enabled hit control T clicking on the gradient texture, use the object coordinate and we'll plug the color into the color ramp. What we're going to do is start seeing some stuff happening. Let's play with this color ramp to get more of an obvious effect here. Now we're getting this right here. So we're just going to kind of cut this in half. And now we have the sort of the idea behind the disintegration effect. So I'm just going to stay right here in the front. And then let's go ahead and start getting that really nice glowing edge. I'm going to bring my base color down just to just for fun. And then let's go and get that. So. So now what we're going to do is take this gradient texture. We're going to get in a new color ramp. So COL, get a color ramp, plug this color into the emission here. So now it's going to start to glow a little bit. Now it's glowing. We're going to plug this color ramp straight into that. I mean, sorry, we're going to plug the gradient into the color ramp and then we're going to bring this, this in until look at that. It's glowing. So we'll bring up that trend, um, that emission strength. And then in your EV settings, we'll click on the camera, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur if you're going to be doing some stuff with it. So we can kind of play with that glowing. And then whatever color you want to go with for the tutorial, let's just let's go with blue. That's kind of fun. And then we can bring this color in. Actually, let's make it red. I want to go back to red. You can bring it in to make it a little stronger. So there we go. We got some stuff going on. We're going to manipulate that more later, but now we have the base of our glowing edge. Let's go ahead and add in some detail here in the vector line. So let's get a noise texture. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you've probably seen this process about a hundred times. It's one of my favorite things to do to add detail to things. So plop a noise texture there. It's all going to disappear. We're going to get a, a mix RGB here. Oops. That is a mix shader. 
We'll get a mix RGB and my X mix RGB plug it right there and we'll plug the object coordinate into color socket number two. Now, if we bring the now we can play with this factor. So if we bring the factor to one, we just got that straight line. So bring this over a little bit. Let's bring our detail up to 12, kind of get some details here. And then now we can just kind of bring this in. Let's bring that distortion up just like that. And then all we have to do here is play with this X location. And then you can, of course, you can rotate this um, effect here. Let's see, where is it at? You can rotate the gradient to make the effect do different things. So it didn't have to go left to right, right to left and go up and down. So this location is our disintegration effect. Now let's go ahead and add some colors to make this look like it's kind of on fire and fading off to give it a really pretty look. So we're gonna go here to the color ramp and then we're gonna take this, we're gonna add the plus icon and we're gonna bring it over to the right on this color. We're now we're gonna be fading off this color. So actually I clicked the wrong one. So let's bring this closer to the edge here and we can even bring, bring this black portion here bring the bright and then we can bring this darker color you can kind of see it working we're just going to make it quite a bit darker here we want this edge to be really bright and then we can go ahead and get one more and then we can just kind of bring that position over make it all the way down here to black and now you get this nice disintegrating effect here with the uh and then we can go ahead and select that last black one kind of bring it over just get more of that effect and then get this orange one holding down position. You can get a little bit more control over it. There we go. And then we can go ahead and bring that emission strength up like this. There we go. Now we've created this fiery looking effect here. And then um, actually let's go back to shading. And there we go. We have created this disintegrating effect. And then you can go ahead and play with like the scale here play with this distortion, really just kind of make it yours. And you can go and now you've created this really interesting, really vibrant disintegration effect. And you can go ahead and add whatever colors you want. What's really fun is you can add in a hue saturation node to make color picking a lot easier if you're just trying to play around and pick new things. So you can go ahead and like give it a nice blue, something like uh, something like this. There you go. And you've now created a really nice disintegration effect. And like I said, this principle right here, you can go ahead and add in like some roughness magic, everything you want to do to make the shader yours and do whatever you want with it. But that is how you create this. Again, inspiration and credit for this idea goes to BBBN19 here on Twitter. Check him out. He's linked in the description. And thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned some stuff.